Hello everybody, welcome to another Political Ideas video. Today we're going to look at conservatism and human nature. And it's not very positive, but it does alter over time and there are some variations. So there's some quite interesting stuff in here. Start, however, with the bit that makes me want to cry, because this really is the most cynical view of human nature. If we go back to one of the very early conservative thinkers, we go back to Hobbes, then he doesn't only argue that humanity is imperfect and his, his idea of imperfect uh, human humanity is a really important one. He goes beyond imperfect to ruthlessly selfish, calculating and competitive. And he says that essentially the world of humanity without the state there to restrain them and strong law and order is one in which human humans regard each other with envy and hatred and would exist in a world of essentially perpetual war, meaning that life would be nasty, brutish and short. There's not a lot of faith in humanity um, from Hobbes. Um, he says that any world without a, a kind of formal state is going to be one of chaos. I mean, this is one of the reasons why his ideal form of state is an authoritarian one, um, because uh, he feels that humanity really needs restraining. Um, he, he does credit humanity with a little, gives it a little bit of credit because uh, they managed to create states. So they're, they're not all bad, but essentially, really, they are all bad. We're all bad, according to Hobbes. Very bad. Right. Now, Burke is sceptical of, of humanity, but not quite as damning as Hobbes. Um, Burke, is, I think, is probably more the uh, quintessential conservative um, writer on human nature. Um, but he doesn't think we're rational. So Burke says that the humans aren't particularly uh, rational. He gives this again this very skeptical uh, view. Um, he, he, he's writing at a time or in reaction to the French Revolution, and he completely dismisses the, this idea that humanity can create itself a utopia. Uh, and he dismisses and is, is very kind of um, scathing of those who, who think that they, sh they that we should try. And so he kind of really rejects kind of um, this this new form of enlightened thinking. Um, again, humanity is flawed, but he doesn't doesn't see humanity as the monsters that Hobbes describes. He, he, he doesn't doesn't see the same ruthlessness. Um, and, and actually, it, there's some interesting stuff in here because he, he sees people as being communal um, rather than individualistic. And this here we, we start to see a, a, a real proper separation between conservatism and liberalism. And, and there is a lot of crossover, uh, particularly in the human nature. One, and we, we can see that um, when we look at some of the new right stuff later on. Um, so community is an important part of it. Now, the central role in terms of hu human community uh, for Burke is the church. Uh, and that has a really important role. But he, he also wrote about this idea of little platoons, which is um, a, a really kind of lovely idea with the idea that that we have these little communities. So rather than talking about a kind of a big society, he talks about little communities. And he says, in that, people find the support and comfort that they need. So with some kind of formal religion and, and a, a little platoon, then um, the Burke gives a slightly more positive um, view of humanity and what it's capable of uh, than we've seen from Hobbes. Right, as we move into one nation conservatism, um, we, we start to see, again, uh, things that are a little bit more positive. We we um, we still, however, have essentially a negative view of humanity to a degree. Um, now, one nation um, bit, and this is this comes like, like largely one rainbow comes from the writings of Oakshot. I mean, Oakshot says essentially that that conservatism is more a psychology rather than a political ideology. It's just kind of a state of mind, really. And he says humanity dislike the unknown. They dislike change. They prefer routine and familiarity. Um, again, you might listen to this and, and, and watch this and think, yes, that's absolutely true. Or you might think completely the opposite. It's, it's a kind of interesting one to ponder in terms of there's an element of this which is conservative with a small C rather than conservative with a, with a big C. Now, he argue, argues again, he talks that Oak Schultz talks about people being fragile and fallible uh, so that the the Humanity is kind of in a delicate state and, and is going to make lots of mistakes, again, dismissing ideas of utopias and things like that. Uh, so he's more in line with Burke than Hobbes. Uh, and, and, and in particular, he, he kind of responds to um, Hobbes's kind of vision of what humanity is like without um, formal government, saying, well, it would be noisy, foolish and flawed rather than this kind of brutish and hell kind of position 
portrayed by Hobbes. So not good, but but not absolutely horrendous. And again, like Burke, stressing the importance of religion. But there is this more positive element with one nation conservatism, because there's this argument uh, of humanity having the, the ability to be benign and benevolent. And this is really important in one nation conservatism because they write about paternalism, this idea that the higher, higher up people in society can look after those lower down. So this idea of benevolence is a really important one and therefore does give us an element of positivity in the view of human nature. Right. The, the kind of the the last one of of, uh, of these is, is we move into the new right and they then start crediting again humanity with rational thought um, and this desire for for individual freedom and the, the, and talks about uh, the things you maybe expect from the new right, the ability to innovate and to uh, and to be enterprising, to to create businesses and new ideas and then the economy is all going to be wonderful and lots of growth and new stuff and things like that. The the confusing bit in terms of the, as looking at conservatism in human nature is that we look at this and kind of go that, that really looked a lot like liberalism with the focus on the individual. Um, and we've got a couple of important um, writers in the new right. And again, part of it and the question I would always keep on asking is, is can we distinguish new right from neoliberal uh, or, or almost some traditional ideas in liberalism? Um, Ayn Rand is an important writer and she wrote uh, The Virtue of Selfishness uh, and she, she talks about humanity being ob uh, having objectivism, um, which is that being driven by, by the idea of self-interest and self-fulfillment. Self uh, and again, I, we, we're, we're really close to, um, to liberalism in, in those kind of ideas, but we've got that rationality of humanity in there, something that some cons traditional conservatives ha have kind of denied. Um, but we've got a new kind of side of this. We talk again, this idea of humanity being egotistical and again this seems to suggest all the flawed elements and selfishness and all the other stuff we've seen earlier but but with some of the new right it talks about this has been a way of people reaching their full potential so it's not seen in necessarily a negative way people being egotistical um and essentially saying the state should get out of way get out of people's way and leave them to do so uh and, and, and Nozvik, again, in writing about this, that doesn't necessarily completely share that negative traditional view of humanity, uh, but he's not definitely not fully positive. And he does, whilst seeing this idea for the, the creativity of humanity and people reaching their full potential for them to be leave, left alone from the state, does recognise a need for law and order to try and keep um, humanity in check. So it's not completely positive again. It's hard, I think, at this point to kind of really split on human nature, some of the new right from uh, some of the, the liberal thinkers. But there is definitely a, a, an underlying scepticism about humanity, which is absent in liberalism. And, and that's one of the overarching things that makes conservatism different to the other um, political ideas in terms of human nature, that whilst in liberalism and socialism, there's an overriding positivity that overriding positivity is not there in conservatism. And it goes right, goes from all the way from downright damning when you go through Hobbes through to fairly sceptical uh, uh, under um, Burke. Uh, and then we start to see some more positive um, elements in it in uh, one nationism uh, and in the new right. But essentially, conservatives think that if you are left to your own devices, people will do bad things to each other and they need some kind of restraint to hold them back. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to, to like, to subscribe, to comment, to do all the polls as they go through. Uh, hopefully, as we go through and we do all the different uh, political ideologies, different types of political ideas, you'll start to get an idea uh, of, of how they clash and how they agree but also maybe start building a picture and, and spotting it in, in the world, because it's not going to be quite as clear as individual political parties being purely one thing or the other in the modern world. And there's a lot of these, uh, looks like a lot of these political thoughts intertwine. And also thinking about where you sit yourselves. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll speak to you all again soon.